As our overheated planet continues to warm, on what shall we focus? The question applies to society and to each of us individually. A peer-reviewed open access paper in Geophysical Research Letters published on December 10, 2024 provided an overview of attempts to decarbonize our lives as well as the likely outcomes of such efforts. Titled, Data-Driven Predictions of Peak Warming Under Rapid Decarbonization, the paper was written by two scholars. The abstract includes this information. Quote, The severe impacts associated with recent record-setting annual global temperatures elevate the need to accurately predict the hottest conditions that could occur even if the most ambitious decarbonization goals are achieved. We use convolutional neural networks to predict peak global warming from recent observed temperature maps and future cumulative CO2 emissions. For the SSP 1 to 1.9 decarbonization scenario, there is greater than 99% probability that mean global warming exceeds 1.5 degrees C, approximately even odds that it reaches 2 degrees C, and about 90% probability that the hottest year globally exceeds 2023 by at least 0.5 degrees C. Further, for the SSP 2-4.5 decarbonization scenario, there is greater than 90% probability that the hottest annual global temperature anomaly is twice the 2023 anomaly, that our framework makes highly accurate out-of-sample predictions of the hottest historical year, provides confidence in the predicted future probabilities, suggesting substantial risks from the extreme local conditions that are likely to result from globally hot years during rapid decarbonization, end quote. That's a mouthful. Here's a clearer overview as explained by three key points that follow the abstract. First, quote, we train convolutional neural networks to predict peak global warming given the map of recent annual temperatures and total additional CO2 emissions, end quote. Second, quote, even if net zero emissions are reached mid-century, mean warming is virtually certain to exceed 1.5 degrees C with even odds of 2 degrees C, end quote. Third, Quote, there is high likelihood of individual years that are at least 0.5 degrees C hotter than 2023, even in the most ambitious decarbonization scenario, end quote. Never mind that Earth already exceeded not only 1.5 degrees C, but also 2 degrees C. Governments of the world reached this conclusion in October 2023, more than a year before this paper was published in Geophysical Research Letters. With that in mind, I agree that, quote, there is high likelihood of individual years that are at least 0.5 degrees C hotter than 2023, even in the most ambitious decarbonization scenario, end quote. In fact, considering the perspectives and goals of the current presidential administration in the U.S., I doubt there will be a significant effort to attempt, much less achieve, quote, the most ambitious decarbonization scenario, end quote. Rather, I strongly suspect, quote, there is high likelihood of individual years that are at least 0.5 degrees C hotter than 2023, end quote. Let's take a quick look at where we are and where we're headed. First, as we have known for several decades, an overheated earth causes plants to reduce carbon sequestration. The headline at The Guardian provides an 11-word overview plants losing appetite for carbon dioxide amid effects of warming climate. The subhead reads, quote, Earth's plants and soils reached peak carbon dioxide sequestration in 2008, but proportion absorbed has been declining since, study finds, end quote. The first two paragraphs of the story in The Guardian provide an excellent description of recent changes in carbon sequestration. Quote, our planet is losing its appetite for mopping up carbon dioxide. Analysis of atmospheric carbon dioxide measurements show that Earth's plants and soils reached peak carbon dioxide sequestration in 2008, and absorption has been declining ever since. Passing this tipping point increases the chances of runaway climate breakdown. Plants and trees have had it good for the last century or so, Rising levels of carbon dioxide helped to spur growth, and warmer temperatures gave rise to a longer growing season. But at some point, these benefits start to be outweighed by the negatives of a warming climate. Wildfires, drought, storms, floods, 
the spread of new pests and diseases, and plant heat stress all absorb the amount of carbon dioxide that plants absorb. End quote. Plants sequester carbon dioxide until it becomes non-limiting to plant growth, just as humans take in oxygen until it becomes non-limiting. Uninformed people believe that more carbon dioxide contributes to continued plant growth. This recent research indicates there are limits on sequestration and therefore growth of plants. The article in The Guardian refers to a peer-reviewed open access paper in Weather, written by two scholars and published on March 24, 2025, the paper is titled, Natural Sequestration of Carbon Dioxide is in Decline. Climate Change Will Accelerate. The abstract provides a compelling overview of societal inaction and the results. Quote, The rate of natural sequestration of CO2 from the atmosphere by the terrestrial biosphere peaked in 2008. Atmospheric concentrations will rise more rapidly than previously in proportion to annual CO2 emissions, as natural sequestration is now declining by 0.25% per year. The current atmospheric increment of plus 2.5 parts per million CO2 per year would have been plus 1.9 parts per million CO2 if the biosphere had maintained its 1960s growth rate. This effect will accelerate climate change and emphasizes the close connection between the climate and natural emergencies. Effort is urgently required to rebuild global biodiversity and to recover its ecosystem services, including natural sequestration. End quote. The latter sentence is critically important. Quote, Effort is urgently required to rebuild global biodiversity and to recover its ecosystem services, including natural sequestration. End quote. Meanwhile, a biodiversity crisis is underway as Earth has emitted a mass extinction event. One outcome is explained in an article at The Conversation, published February 27, 2025. Written by a professor of evolution at the University of Cambridge, the article is titled, Botanic Gardens Are Struggling to Keep Up with the Biodiversity Crisis. Here's what they can do. What can they do? Not much, according to this article. In fact, the third paragraph of the article seems surprisingly honest. Quote, as a curator of one of the world's largest university botanic gardens, I often talk about the power of living collections. I also recognize their limits. The world's botanic gardens hold an extraordinary diversity of plants, but they are struggling to keep up with the accelerating biodiversity extinction crisis. End quote. Later in the article we read, quote, Our recent study, published in the journal Nature, Ecology, and Evolution, analyzed 50 of the world's largest living plant collections, currently growing 41% of all species in cultivation and 500,000 individual plants. Our research spanned a century of digitized data, and the findings are striking. Our new research suggests that our current global system of botanic gardens is not keeping pace with the biodiversity crisis. End quote. This is no surprise, of course. We are amid the most severe mass extinction event in planetary history. Ongoing climate change is abrupt and irreversible. Institutions are attempting to keep up, generally without success. What about you? What about other individuals? As I have articulated many times in this space, I encourage you to recognize what you would like to accomplish in your relatively short stay as a human on Earth. In other words, I encourage you to live with death in mind.